Hello, we're here with Colleen Eckehart, who is running for Seattle mayor. Would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? I would. Well, thank you so much um, for having me today. Um, I, I was mentioning a minute ago that I'm nervous and it's an, it's a good feeling for me actually, because that's um, the way I have been living my life for a really long time, as I have been spending the past seven years fighting um, and supporting urban Native people who are experiencing homelessness and, and working to transform that system. And I am running for mayor because I believe that this city is ready for transformational change. Change in how we police, change in how we respond to climate crisis, and especially change in how we deal with our homeless relatives. Solving the humanitarian crisis of homelessness will be my top priorities mayor. I've worked with our homeless community for the past seven years. I love them. I believe in them and I'm ready to work for them and for our whole city. Seven years ago, I became the head of the Chief Seattle Club. We support urban native people. Um, we operate a day shelter. We feed people. We host a health clinic. And a few years ago, we decided that we need to get serious about building housing. And so I went to city hall. I met with a senior official. I told him my ideas and he actually laughed at me. He said, you're too small, too inexperienced. And I remember walking back to my office with a lot of swirling emotions, as you can imagine, but I didn't let it stop us. Right now we're building $180 million of affordable housing, and we are changing the landscape for generations for native people. And you know, we've had to be super creative. We've worked with King County to put surplus trailers on an empty parking lot to provide emergency housing. We've used unused hotel rooms. I know um, that there's so many problems around our homeless community, so many problems with um, our, our, our Seattle Police Department. We have to recover from COVID. But I'm here to tell you that I'm a change maker. That's the story of my life. The story of my life is being nervous in new situations and getting out there and offering leadership to our community and vision for where we need to go. That's what I will bring um, as mayor. I love this city. I love the people that are in this city um, doing this good work. So thank you so much. Great, thank you. And so now we'll move into the prepared questions. And again, these responses are two minutes apiece. Okay. Uh, I'll post it into the chat box so you could read along as mm -hmm. Alice asks the first one. Yeah. Um, sounds like this will be up your alley. What mm -hmm. specific actions will you take to address the homelessness crisis in Seattle, both in the short, short term and long term? Please yeah. address land use, zoning, revenue, regional collaboration, the role of social services, the role of the police and justice system. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you, you asked a lot of great questions there. Um, day one of ECOHAWK administration is we start the emergency housing program. That is um, three to 4,000 people on our streets right now who are sleeping outside. It's gonna be an above, uh, all of the above approach. It's going to take uh, everyone in, in the city government to get moving and starting on this. And frankly, I'm part of the reason I'm doing this and running for mayor is because I am frustrated that we have not treated this like the emergency it is. I hope that in the first year we bring in everyone into that housing. So that's the immediate first thing. Then we have to build the housing, the permanent housing. We cannot um, lose track that, that permanent housing is the solution to homelessness. Um, I sit on the National Low Income Housing Coalition. I know the crisis that's there and we are going to have to address zoning. We are going to have to um, think about changing zoning laws so that we can build denser and so that we can build up and so that we can create um, a city that really um, works for all of us and not just for the very, very rich. Um, we have um, a tremendous crisis of mental health on our hands. And I will tell you that I have personally seen Seattle Police Department be incredibly harmful to, um, to, to people who are experiencing homelessness. That will not happen on my watch. We um, will move Seattle Police Department and I and actually was part of actually changing the navigation team structure. Um, what, six months ago now? Um, and I will continue that. 30 seconds. Um, and, and, and bring in the real people that know how to do this work. Um, another part of our plan is to create a volunteer corps. I hear people asking me all the time, Colleen, I want to help, I wanna do something. So we will create that place where people can be a part of the solution. We can solve homelessness. We just haven't had the political will to get it done. I will do that. As far as um, funding, we're thinking about um, uh, that 1% income tax that we can possibly do. Property taxes are, uh, are, are burdensome. So that's, that's what we're thinking about for funding. So I just wanted to make sure it was wrapped in there. 
That's quite all right. And I'm pretty sure somebody will probably ask about funding again later in one of their <laughs> follow-ups. Uh, question number two, we're gonna go over to Jeff. Hey, so what is your strategy for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods and assuring affordable housing? How would you work to dismantle systemic racist arrangements such as redlining, uh, including, uh, but not limited to exclusionary zoning and land use policies? Do you support and would you sign city legislation to end single family zoning as Berkeley, California recently did? Absolutely, I'll answer that question first. I would um, support that initiative and, and changing that zoning law. To me, it's just common sense. It's what we have to do. Um, I have, like I mentioned earlier, been, I am a builder of affordable housing. And I can tell you that the barriers are huge. The system is, is cumbersome. Low income housing tax credits, they're not nearly enough. It's not even, it, it barely is a drop in the bucket. And so we have to change that whole system and think about ways that we truly make it equitable. Um, when I first started working at the T Seattle Club, there were no native agencies who um, were doing affordable housing. And I mentioned earlier that it, it took, it was, a, it was a scrappy fight <laughs> for us to get that done. Um, and, and I think we have this we have this idea in our city that black led organizations, native led organizations don't have the resource don't have the capacity. I always say it's not that we don't have the capacity, we don't have the resources. We just need to get the dollars into the hands. Um, so I will be passionate, if you can't tell, about getting those resources into the black community specifically. Um, we know that redlining and gentrification has harmed that community as well as the native community. We need to be using preference policies so that if you have been in that neighborhood, the central district as a family and you owned a house or you've, you've lived there for a long time, that you get to have um, rise to the top of our affordable housing list every time we build new affordable housing. The Office of Civil Rights has been working on this for a while and Austin and seconds. Portland have been, been modeling it. We also need to, to be thinking about affirmative marketing to our communities so that we have, um, so that we're not continuing. Um, right now, a lot of our affordable housing is not going to black and, and uh, native communities. So we have to do um, something much better there. Um, finally, I'll say that I'm building housing that can go up quick. Um, we're building um, housing that's made out of panels in Tacoma. We have to be able to scale quickly. And so um, I have the experience and the passion um, to get that done and look forward to working with you all on that. Great, thank you. Uh, Mackenzie, question number three. Yes, uh, would you, I'm sorry, uh, would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget? And if so, by approximately what percentage? And what is your plan for the city's fog negotiations? And do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? Uh, absolutely unqualified immunity. I testified um, on this at um, the state legislature this past session. I am a, a commissioner on the Seattle Community Police Commission for four years. I've had a front row seat to how our reform is working. And I can tell you, and you all know this, that our reform is not working and we have to do much, so much better. And yes, I would support decreasing the Seattle Police Department budget. I can't tell you right now what that, what exact percentage would be because um, I we have to look at that whole system. And I can tell you the places where I would make those decreases. So mental health, absolutely. I have seen police officers just continually re-traumatize um, our community. I have personally um, been a victim of racial bias. Um, I have um, experienced um, what it's like to work with the Seattle Police Department because we have um, police officers actually on the commission. And so we need to be thoughtful about how we um, and where we will take um, some of their jobs that they're doing that don't need to be done. So if we take, you know, mental health workout, um, I think we spent like $3 million on um, police officers working with our homeless community. We take that out. Um, we also think about um, really regulating um, the overtime situation. I mean, I have for years, you guys, I have been working on that, like bringing it up all the time. And we've been ignored on the Community Police Commission. That is an incredible um, way. <laughs> It's a, if you, I invite you to look at the Seattle Times article about it. Um, I also will be thinking about traffic 
Um, there are so many um, uh, jobs that could go back to the community um, and, and taken out of the Seattle Police Department. I will be active about doing that. I can't give a percentage right now because I can't do it in all honesty, right? But I'm, I'm passionate about taking um, those jobs out of the Seattle Police Department and seeing true community safety, community-led organizations that are doing it already, like uh, uh, Community Pathways and other organizations like that. I think that's a, that okay. Yes, yes. It wasn't that loud this time. That's okay. Right. It's okay. Uh, question number four, Sherry. There we go. Um, how will you prioritize transportation infra infrastructure for biking, pedestrians, public transit, commercial vehicles, and cars? Which mm. do you as most important to prioritize funds for? Uh, I, I'm answering the, the last question um, la, um, first, Ali. So um, absolutely prioritizing um, bikes, um, pedestrians, uh, you know, scooters, whatever we can do to help our community get out of cars. Um, I've been very fortunate to go to Japan and to witness public transportation that works for our community. And we have to have vision for it. And we have to know, um, well, we have to have the leadership for it. We've been talking about this for a long time, but haven't actually done anything. Um, well, not anything, but not enough. Um, we know that 25% of Washingtonians don't even have a driver's license. And we have um, people with disabilities who don't drive. So we need to be looking and thinking about um, those people that have been historically left out of transportation planning and bring them into our transportation system. Um, a people first transportation system means that no one is stranded without a way to get around. Mobility justice means that transportation is accessible for everyone. I've spent my whole career um, working on um, justice issues and that's the vision I will bring to the city around transportation. Um, I know that there are places in our community where um, we are not prioritizing and, and there are community members that are suffering. Um, one quick example of a way that I participated in this is that um, the, Seattle uh, the Seattle streetcar, I was against it. I was like, no, it's, it's just why, right? Um, I heard from the community in the international district who said we were promised that. 30 seconds. And I, and I absolutely changed my mind and in fact helped co-write um, an op-ed in support of the streetcar. I, I use that as an example because often communities of color are left out or they are, um, you know, they have to endure like the transport, uh, the, the construction around them. I will listen and ask for their leadership in these spaces and we will increase public transportation in those spaces where we know that communities have been left out. Okay, thank you so much. And so now we'll move to uh, questions from the board. And uh, again, these responses are one minute a piece and you'll get a 15 second reminder or, oh, yeah. So questions from the board, if you would raise your hand. I can always go with the first one. Uh, we have a, uh, an environmental committee in the 36 now and they submitted a question. So I'm gonna read that. Sure. Um, it's uh, how would you use this office to address climate justice, ensuring a healthy environment and access to climate supporting solutions such as multimodal clean transportation op options for all residents? Mm -hmm. So my campaign, campaign staff wants me to talk about all of our climate ideas, but I want to be honest with you all. All the candidates are gonna offer you the right things. You can look at all of our websites and you'll see it. But we know that since Greg Nichols launched the Climate Action Plan in 2006, that every, every year since 2006, climate emissions in Seattle have been going up every year. Um, and in 2018, we said Seattle will be carbon neutral by 2050, and we're not even close to being on track to meet that goal. So even with good ideas and good policies and good words during election season, nothing's happening. Where's the disconnect? I think it comes down to courage. That's why we need transformational change in Seattle. It means making those hard decisions about density, zoning, transportation. It means standing up for climate justice for communities of color. I have a great track of working with tribes. I would bring our tribal communities in to help lead this. We have to have a community um, that, that is, is truly living out our progressive values and we need to have um, the courage to do it. And that's what I'll bring to this. Great, thank you. Mackenzie. Hi, yes, thanks. Um, Tacoma recently passed a measure where they're going to start implementing a pilot program for universal basic income. Yeah. And while I know a, a 
a large portion of that is going to be um, privately funded or through donations. I was curious if uh, a model program like something along those lines is something you would be interested in implementing in Seattle. And if so, uh, how would you go about paying for such a thing? No. <laughs> We were talking about this so much today in our campaign. Absolutely. I love the idea. I mean, I think I, I followed Andrew Yang, thought he, I think he's a really smart person. And I think it's a it's a really brilliant idea. I've seen it work in the homeless community where we just give folks dollars and then they find their, their solution. Um, but the reality is it's going to cost a lot of money. And where we will get that money from, I don't know, because we have a housing and homelessness crisis on our hands. My administration would be absolutely zero focus on solving that crisis. Once I get that figured out, then I would be open to thinking about a pilot project there, um, or maybe a pilot project along the way, something like Tacoma's doing, where it's just 200 people, um, and get some private dollars in to, to see what comes there. Um, I'm a fundraiser. <laughs> I know that's... I know philanthropy in this city. Um, I know the corporations that have been coming together to think about funding homelessness. Um, I would reach out to them to see if we could fund it. I think it's a good idea, but we've got to solve homelessness and housing first. Great, thank you. Any further questions? Mackenzie, you still have a question or is your hand just up? Sorry, I forgot. That's okay. Further questions? I guess I can ask about uh, funding. You did talk a little bit about mm -hmm. about that, but um, just what are your what are your ideas for um, you know progressive revenue and mm -hmm. take on that? I mean, absolutely. We have to do. We have to figure out something better for our city um, around a progressive revenue. Um, I am very open to the idea of a bond on property tax on properties um, incomes. Um, I am open to thinking about um, a new tax for employers. Um, but I will tell you that what we have seen in the past is a lot of um, people not understanding, not coming together. Our jumpstart tax is now under. Um, uh, under legal scrutiny. And so I want to be um, talking to our business owners. I have a very good track record of, of, of offering solutions um, that we can come together on. And I think that's what we, our city re needs right now. I'm not only a builder of housing, seconds. but I'm a builder of relationships. And we need someone who can um, bridge the divides, um, bring in business community, bring in our homeless community, they have a voice, bring in um, our, our union and labor workers and our essential workers and get this done. Great, hey, thank you. Any other questions? Barbara, go ahead. Hello, um, let, me, let me know if you can hear me. I'm on a different uh, system tonight. Is, uh, can you, okay, great. I can hear you, yep. So, good, so, um, Aside from the sea, the tsunami of homelessness mm -hmm. and all the torment that it's bringing to our city, Seattle is a huge mm -hmm. hundreds of thousand person metropolitan area with going through growing pains of, that are not related to homelessness, that are related to the digital expansion. Um, you know, it's many, many departments running wonderful and varied programs. It's, you know, hundreds of miles of sidewalks and potholes and deferred maintenance, and it's all going on. And it's one of the hardest jobs in the country, maybe the hardest mayor of a big, a big, uh, big municipal city. Seattle's just on the brink of being a big city. And um, I haven't heard you talk about uh, the city that, the, you know, the city, the heritage of Seattle and um, the just sort of really ro uh, wanting to roll your sleeves up and make the city um, as good as it ever was or better for, um, you know, what is it, 700,000 people who call it home and work here. So I'd love to hear you talk about that rather than the homeless mm -hmm. uh, and housing crisis that we're in or the pandemic. Yeah, 
I love that you asked that question. I love this city so much and believe in it so much. And I think we need to come back even better. There were things that happened prior to COVID that were not great for a lot of people. So let's make it even better. I have some of the most, um, the most managerial experience out of all the other candidates that are out there. I have um, brought an agency from under 500,000 to an operating budget of 17 million. And now we have $180 million of housing that we're building. Um, so I have have extensive management experience. My master's program was around leadership and management. That's just one of my things that I'm be the best at, honestly. Um, and so I will be building a team that um, is our experts in their fields, and I will let them go seconds. and do their work. I'm not a micromanager. We've had experiences with mayors in the past who've micromanaged a team, and we, and we have a failing infrastructure. Um, as an organizational um, leader, I understand that we have to have our infrastructure working in order to have our city working. So um, I love the question. Thank you so much, because it's one of my passions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And that is time. So if you would like to go ahead and give a one minute wrap up, feel free. Thank you so much for having me, number one, and all of your hard work that you're doing here. Um, I care about the city. You've heard it in my voice. That's why I'm running for mayor. I have been so frustrated um, with the lack of ability for us to get something done. Um, you know, a lot of people have experience and come to that job, but experience doesn't mean that you're going to be successful. My work has been successful, and that's what I will bring to um, this mayoral office. We have to have change. What has been happening for far too long cannot continue. We have a humanitarian crisis on our hands where we have 4,000 people who are sleeping outside tonight. That breaks my heart. And I want to bring us together so that we can get this job done, bring back Seattle in such a beautiful way that we are known throughout the world as being the kind of city that we talk about, progressive, generous, kind, and, and taking care of each other in community. Um, that's what I'll bring. I feel like my ancestors are pushing me forward to this moment and I will bring my heart and my, um, and my brains to this work. So thank you so much. Thank you.